just kind of noodling around over the top of a dominant chord. Um, and in this case, it's an E9 chord. The E9 chord is going to have elements of major, my major third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, and then my nine there. And so it, it has those both elements of major and minor. It can be kind of tricky to solo over. And so one thing that um, I like to do, I don't consider myself a very creative guitar player, so I need to lean on those giants that came before me and pick up ideas from them and try to make them my own. And the way I do that is if I hear a solo I like or a phrasing I like of some sort, I'm gonna just take it, analyze it, figure it out, and start to noodle around with it like I was doing. I didn't have anything worked out. I was just trying to figure out some different ways to solo. And in this case, I am borrowing from Luther Perkins. Now, if you don't know Luther Perkins, you've probably heard his guitar playing many times. He was Johnny Cash's guitar player for a number of years, and he played the, the, the famous guitar solo to Folsom Prison Blues. Now, that may sound nothing like what I was trying to do. And um, further, I'm like playing this beautiful, exquisite Ibanez Pia guitar, uh, which would not have been on a Johnny Cash album. Uh, well, let me give you give you an example of how I would approach this. So the song Folsom Prison Blues is just an E major chord. It's in the key of A to the A and the B7 E. And the way Perkins is approaches that solo is he plays in, in, in an E chord over the top of the E chord, the, the main chord of the whole song. And he plays a, a pattern that's over the top of this shape of guitar or shape of chord. So if the E major chord at the seventh fret, just a bar chord looks like that. And what he does is he's going to take these notes of the chord and he's going to play those as the primary notes of the chord. And this is the major third of the chord. That's the perfect fifth. And what he does is a very common thing of going from minor third to major third. And then he comes to that perfect fifth and then he throws in this sneaky minor seventh which gives it kind of that, um, kind of a funky sound. It sounds like over the top of the E major chord, it, it sounds different. It sounds a little bit out there, and it is. Um, it's a minor seventh over a major chord, so it sounds like a, a, an E dominant seven chord in his playing. So his, his solo goes like this. And it's, it's basically an E arpeggio with that seven. Now, I, I love that lick, and I think almost anyone that's heard the song loves the guitar solo. It's such a perfect guitar solo for that song. Um, and, well, what I want to do is I want to figure out what's going on. How can I apply that to my own playing? So what I did is I just look at, okay, what where's the phrase at? What's the chord shape that goes with that positioning? So at the seventh fret over an E major chord, um, it would be this shape. So he's playing in that shape there. Now, when I go to noodle around with it, I have to leave that pattern really quickly because it's just a... There's just only so much you can do there with that pattern. Um, and the more you experiment with that pattern here, the more licks and phrases and ideas you're gonna come up with. Um, but what I like to do then uh, is to take that same phrase, find it somewhere else on the guitar neck um, on different strings. So um, he starts the phrase off with that minor third. So I'm at the 12th fret third string goes to the major third, that's the 13th fret, comes down to the 12th fret, and then it would go up to the uh, 15th fret. So you have. So I now I have a different place or a different pattern. Gives me some different options for soloing. be a little bit more comfortable for me to explore. So I have that pattern there. Well, I'm going to look for one other one. And what I'll do is I'm going to go up to the, the 10th fret. 
where my minor third is, go up to my major third, perfect fifth, and then down to my minor seventh. Now, if you'll notice the patterns that I'm using, I started off at the seventh fret. I went up to the ninth position, and then, and I know I went in a different order, um, then the twelfth. So I'm covering three chord shapes, E major here, E major here, E major here. And each one of those Just by taking that simple phrase, placing it somewhere else on the guitar neck on different strings opens up all sorts of different possibilities. And then when I do that, I can start to flow through across the neck intelligently over the top of a chord. Now that's one way I like to try to come up with new ideas is actually taking old ideas and um, reworking them for myself. So you have to analyze the chord, what's taking place in the phrase, and then you move it uh, to another place on the neck. Uh, I hope that's a helpful approach. And one th benefit of this is, is it forces you to learn other people's solos and ask yourself what's going on in them. It makes it easier for you to apply it to yourself. Hope that's helpful. Please subscribe if it is.